Alrighty, have the sh uh, Rail King in the shop today. Brought it back here because the wire harness needs to get taken apart. I was about 97% sure. I don't know, maybe 9 to 7% sure that wiring was the issue. I got 12 volt coming out of the controller. Uh, check outputs so I can kind of verify what goes where. We have no wiring schematic, so we're at the kind of Figure this out from scratch. Let's see here. That looks like uh, this is where it goes up into the chassis, the the TCU, which is the shifter and computer all in one. But this harness runs all the way up that way. But I get this off here so I can force that up. That looks like. Ooh, I don't know. Do we go Imperial? Do we go SAE? Let's go. 14 millimeter. Look at those calibrated eyeballs. Okay, well I can't get it off the socket, so it was probably SAE. I just don't know these days. Alright. Got my nut off. Got my P clamp. This off here. Oh jeez. Hulk mode. Yeah. Get that off. Okay. Now we're free, so we can get that up. But yeah, you can see harness. It runs over here. I am suspecting where our issues occurring is. They got all this. Uh, oh, I can't even grab it. There's all this metal. This is it a scrap yard? Just sits up inside here. Just a ton of it. I've already been picking a bunch out of it. Just a lot of that stuff. I bet you it maybe cut somewhere, grounding out somehow. But anyways, yeah, it runs from here all the way across uh, back to this hole, and then that gets on the um, the engine side, transmission side. Let me go on the other side here. Go on the adult jungle gym. And I've been kind of blowing this out and stuff, trying to get it somewhat cleaned up, but look at, I pulled all this out of here where that wiring comes through. You can see how it comes through right there. That's up where I was just at over here. But that transmission uh, controller is the shifter. Oh, 10 millimeters, ooh, that might be eight. Eight it is, see? Calibrated eyeballs. My daddy always said here, California eyeballs. Don't look at this mess in here. It's not normally like this. Don't judge me. God, them sounds way too close to this. Bam! Access. Okay, so what we got going on here is I have the TCU unplugged. This is the TCU plug. And um, we are checking for the 12 volt input. So as of right now, it is using um, just a good chassis ground. And I'm gonna check for my 12 volt in. So that way I know, one, that we've got 12 volt in. So here's our plug disconnected from the TCU. So we obviously run an error code right now, but we should still have our 12 volt in. And something about a manic Monday. How about a violent Thursday? Oh my gosh, have I ever done this before? There we go. I'm gonna go around. I am currently in neutral, N1. We're gonna go on forward. And I get an air. Oh, that's because the emergency brake is. Yeah. Hmm. Alright, bear with me. So I don't wanna do this with the truck running. I need to bypass the, um, the brake. Uh, so I didn't know 
how it knew because it's an air actuated brake. You can see this air solenoid. I don't know if I can get you down there. The air solenoid uh, will uh, pull that brake arm up, but there's no electrical down on it or on this piece. So that means it has to be some kind of pressure switch. Again, I'm not familiar with this truck. So the way I figured that out was um, I traced this airline. Thanks. This airline comes up, goes around, god dang it. It goes around and it plugs into here in this little manifold. Now I don't know this for a fact, but because it's just a, um, a this pressure switch. So it's an open close. So I know it's safe to go ahead and just try and bypass it. So if I'm right, if I bypass this like that, it will now think, because I'm assuming it's normally open. Now it'll think, see how much assuming goes on? You have no idea what you're doing. It's educated guesses, my friends. Now, if I'm correct, this thing's gonna think now. I have no air, so there's no possible way that I can actuate the vehicle emergency brake. But if I'm correct, now when I shift into gear, damn, I'm wrong. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, I went back to this. I did try to um, short it to close the circuit. So now I went ahead and opened one side of it because I'm under the belief it's normally closed. <clears throat> and now, if I'm correct, again, neutral, no codes. If I put it into gear, okay, so there we go. So now it thinks it's full of air, even though we're not. And no air is sitting in neutral. I'm gonna put it in gear and I have no air code. So right now it thinks it's in gear. Uh, with all this working correctly, or they're fooling the system into thinking it's working correctly, I should be able to go ahead and uh, test appropriately. Mm. <laughs> Locks on ground. Why didn't you tell me? Because you look like an idiot trying to do this. This is something you want to keep in mind while you're checking this stuff: is don't lead yourself down a rabbit hole. I need to see how that signal gets sent out. Let's mark my diagram. This is 12 volt and forward. Newton? You better not lose my 10 mil! That transmission uh, controller is the shifter. Hmm. The TCU, which is the shifter and computer all in one. What the hell do these other ones do? Are they inputs? Remember how I was thinking this was the TCU? Here's the issue. So this is putting out 12 volt, and I was fairly certain that all the functions were controlled inside here. Uh, map that out, and I traced the wiring underneath the way I thought I could, and it, it gets lost in this loom. Like, there's so much loom everywhere. Uh, so I pulled out the TC, or the, um, the transmission controller harness out far enough to where I could at least plug into it and see what's putting out. Every single pin on there is nine volt or less. It's nine volt, five volt, a lot of five volt reference stuff. Uh, but like nine volts are getting put out. Uh, it's moments like so, these that you really need to look at what you know and what you have figured out so far and see if it actually makes sense. We're flying, Dorothy. So, when you come up underneath here, there's our uh, shifter harness. I was already fairly convinced there was something else involved in this, but given the weird voltages I had gotten, 
there had to have been another controller hidden somewhere. Come over this way, and so I was like, well, let's see where that goes. Keeping an open mind, because it didn't say it was a TCU on that controller. That was an assumption. Pulls off here. Hey, look at there, boys. TCU. She was hiding from me. Look at this. I'm looking here. Well, this is where I'm sitting. That's where she's hiding. TCU. It can't even get more hilarious that it actually says TCU on there. That makes me laugh. Me. <laughs> let's, uh, let's do a little pinning out here and see what I finger out. But now that I've discovered my uh, elusive TCU, uh, with a little bit of research with my awesome, freaking awesome manager, Adam. Super sharp guy, he's very resourceful. But uh, we got it figured out. We didn't know about the TCU to begin with. Now that we know this exists, I found this stupid thing. Uh, I can finally do some checks. Uh, 50 bucks. Yes, more. 100 bucks. Yes, more. 200 bucks. Close, 160. What? I can buy it cheaper. I can 35 bucks on Amazon. Without getting super into the weeds with this, we are looking at this TCU and how it's controlled. At any point in this video, you, you can pause and, and read a lot of this over. You can check me and see if I'm right or if you disagree with me. But, uh, Here's your TCU on the J3 connector. And I want this connector. Here's your valve body. Ours, this is a representation. Ours isn't set up the same way. So you're looking at one that's uh, more set for like a eight speed. Ours is a four speed. So like we wouldn't have these solenoids. Um, we have uh, one through four and then AB. Um, we got forward, first through fourth, reverse, first through fourth. We do not have first and third. What's the commonality of that? Is the fact that they both use first solenoid or number one solenoid to control first and third. So when you're looking at the valve body and you're looking at these, this is what you're looking at. You're looking at a proportional valve. Here is our pinout. And we said we were concerned about solenoid one and we want to look at solenoid one and, oh, uh, sorry, solenoid one. So you have your pulse width modulated out, that's the signal out. And then you'll have your current sense return or current sense input. That means that this sends a signal out. It goes through the solenoid, comes back. And this is what it sees when it comes back. We are back probing uh, A3 and B1 at the TCU. Right there, A3, B1. I was getting um, zeros, like no pulse width modulation. Uh, so we know that it has continuity because it knows that there's a load. So it's not like you've got a brook wire or something like that. But there's nothing coming out of uh, A3, there's nothing coming out of there to say, drive this solenoid, do something with it. It was zeros. So let's take a few examples of things that we know that work. Uh, B2, B3, there's your solenoid two. Solenoid two, uh, output and return. When we checked it, I was getting 70% um, on duty cycle. I went and checked solenoid threes and four, three and four, because we know uh, they also work, and I was getting the same thing. But went back to solenoid one, rechecked myself, zeros. What is driving solenoid one from this A3 to B1 pin? What is driving that? It's not doing anything. It has lost control. That the TCU has, it is, it is faulty. There is test equipment available for this. 
we don't have it. No one around locally to us has it. No. I informed the customer that uh, this is an educated guest based on the information I had. I let him know where I was at, what I thought. And what I'm gonna end up doing is I'll get this TCU ordered. Uh, told the customer it'll be a few days before it gets here. And once it gets put on, I will let you guys know. You'll be the first ones to know if it actually fixed it. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. And uh, let me know how you feel about my uh, diagnostics and my path that I went through.